This is a question that I wasn't sure I was going to ask. I wanted to see how this conversation went, but I think the conversation has gone in a way that I find it, um, I, I find it really um, on my mind. And the question put quite simply is, what is a scholar's duty to the truth? And let me unpack that a little bit. Be on the one hand, I think um, we've made a number of very salient observations in terms of the need to complicate these terms, to think about what we call conspiracy theory as, you know, we've heard the term subaltern epistemologies, thinking through the role of different kinds of power arrangements as to what counts as truth, what doesn't. Clearly, scholars have an obligation in our work to continue to complicate and nuance those narratives. On the other hand, I think for a variety of reasons, many of us are in institutions that also understand the duty obligations to the truth in a different way, which is when there is misinformation out there and that misinformation is, is potentially harmful or demonstrably harmful, then scholars have an opportunity, have the obligation to assert the truth over and against this harm. And so I'm wondering if we think those two duties to truth are ever intention. That is the duty to continue to complicate the narrative and point out the different nuances on the one hand, or on the other hand, the duty to say there is clear misinformation that is causing harm. And whether it's in a sort of enlightenment mode of verification and falsifiability, we just sort of need to assert the truth before more people get hurt. Are those modes in tension? Do they fit together? How do we think about scholarship in relation to that? Um, Candice, can we start with you? Gosh, that's a, that's a really complicated question. Um, I'm not certain I have a great answer, except I, as you were talking, I was thinking, so if we're talking about so what is our, our duty and service to the truth as scholars, which truth? In the context of misinformation and disinformation, you could ask the question around the factuality of claims, or you could ask the question around the dynamics of communication of power, right? So, you know, again, just coming back to the online example, I mean, you can use it in other contexts, right? I mean, I certainly think, um, I'm not to open a can of worms, but like this recent national debate around uh, the degree to which critical race theory has entered uh, school curricula uh, in, in the K through 12 level, okay? We can get into that. Uh, we don't even get into it on the university level, but just the K through 12 level uh, in, in public schools. Um, but so the question is, if we're talking about misinformation and disinformation as a phenomenon and a dynamic, and uh, the the duty is not to the factuality of the claims um, in an in information environment. It's actually um, to understanding the systems that make those claims resonant with certain communities, right? Um, and I mean that on a couple of different levels. So there are the technological systems in the context of social media, for instance, <coughs> excuse me, um, that we, we as scholars have a duty to understand and research um, their, their impact uh, and, and their capabilities on these types of questions. There is then the kind of institutional view, for instance, members of Congress or, you know, local officials or um, authorities of some sort who are in a position of power, um, how do we understand their mandates and provisions in terms of protecting a collective and consensus of view uh, that has been agreed upon in law, for instance? Um, not just normative, but literally sort of in a, sort of a very concrete way, um, these actions may result in certain types of harms or injuries. Right, so when we're talking about it in that in that sense, as scholars, I think there's there's a range uh, of action that that is available to us to influence the conversation, um, and to influence the scholarship, uh, and to and understand the idea of truth generally. Um, but when we're talking about trying to push back 
on you know factual claims that are counterfactual i'm not certain it's a good use of energy um, i'm not certain that it's a it's going to be a winning line uh, of strategy even in the context of institutional politics let's take a university as an example i will name no universities here i will simply say that we know that this debate over um, the story of america and power and race has been extremely complicated, um, at least since the appearance of the 1619 project that the New York Times put together, okay? And that it is a galvanizing force in our national conversation about belief. Uh, and that's an example where you, you may not win if your strategy uh, as a scholar is to confront that as a moment to tell the truth. Uh, 